What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today we're back with a $600 win. What might be one of the best cars you can buy for the money. So here it is, my 1995 Pontiac Bonneville. How many of you remember these cars from back in the day? This is a very base model version of the Bonneville. They came in SE, SSE, and SSEI. The SSEI was pretty unique because it had an appearance package and it had the supercharged 3800 engine, which honestly, if you can find that, that's the one you want. The SE, just a very basic trim model, doesn't have very many options, and it doesn't have the appearance package. The SSE, however, came with an appearance package that made it look like an SSEI. It had lots of exterior changes, and some interior features that this one doesn't have, like leather interior, a bunch of additional buttons and functions and things that this car is missing. But ultimately, this is what I ended up with for 600 bucks. And the reason why I think this may be one of the best bangs for the buck that you can get today is because of how reliable this powertrain is. The 3800 Series 2 is bullet proof very few things to worry about on this engine same thing with the transmission these things generally just drive forever taking a look at the interior of this car it is in phenomenal condition this one has really aged well kind of like fine wine you know this one just gets better and better with time you'll be surprised when i tell you how many miles this car has on it i was absolutely shocked i thought i was looking at a very low mileage unit because of how nice the interior was take a look at the headliner yes everything is intact and looks good all of the door panels look good the seats are in great shape and take a look at the the old school goodyear rubber floor mats you even have a sunshade back here like this screams old person car you've got some chrome wheel cap uh, wheel lug nut covers i guess i don't know um in here cup holders and an access to the trunk this thing You've got the uh, the light cover that came off of, well, I don't know, the front door sitting back here as well. Very clean example for such an old car. And 175,000 miles on the odometer. I hear the trunk release, but I don't see it working. Now, IAA dropped this car off and I have not driven it. I simply took the key off of the... Uh, steering wheel and then i threw it in the house i haven't had time to mess with this car at all so we're going to find out together if this thing runs and drives the trunk well it's empty except for a bunch of wow a ton of air fresheners good lord something must have really stank in here because all i can smell is air fresheners do we have a spare tire we do yeah spare tire it looks like we got some wires this goes to one of the speakers looks like it ripped right out all right big trunk lots of room i assume this is where the jack and everything yep your original jack take a look at this this thing has never been on the ground it still has the factory lube well, it's not really lube anymore no joke a little rusty back here and the original uh what do you call these the lug wrench and of course you use that to uh adjust the jack i'll put all that stuff back later 175,000 miles. It's got some hail damage. It's definitely a little bit dirty. Some dings, scrapes, and scratches along it, but overall not too bad. It's got these really nice aluminum wheels. I actually really like these. They say ABS for anti-lock brakes. You've got Firestone tires, and this car has a matching set of Firestones all the way around it. I got the car for 600 bucks, and it's a donation which is great news because that means any money goes to a charity and that makes you feel good. Even if you end up with a car that's got like a bad transmission or even a blown motor, hey, the money went to a good cause and that's ultimately all that matters. $600 out the door, however, is a different story. I was rather surprised at the, uh, the prices. 600 bucks for the car out the door came out to 1100 and something. It was close to $1,200 when I was done. So literally almost double the price of the car out the door. Absolute insanity. But again, like I said, the money's going to a good cause, to a good place. So I know that $600 of it <laughs> went to a good cause. Let's pop the hood. Uh-oh, can I not... 
the hood seems to be stuck. Uh, popping the hood on this is definitely something I want to do for this video because I want to showcase that beautiful 3800. So I'm going to show you a trick that I use if I end up in a situation where a hood is stuck and I just can't get it open. Usually right by the headlight, it's a pretty good gap here. I'll find something, anything. It could be a rock, a pebble, a stick, uh, a piece from the interior. It doesn't matter. Just take something and kind of lift up on the hood, shove it under there. All right, now you've got pretty good pressure pulling up on that hood latch. Come in here, pull it again. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, it works nine times out of 10. <laughs> Apparently, this is the one time out of 10 it does not work. So as it turns out, it did work. I just had to kind of take my fist and tap on the hood a little bit, and I put that piece right here on the bumper to really put pressure on this hood latch here and it came right open it popped open just fine so what i'm looking for is any damage anything crazy under here looks like it's had a recent tensioner pulley replacement you see how shiny the tensioner is down there that's new looks like we've got metal elbows for the heater hoses that's an upgrade because factory they were plastic and they were notorious for breaking looks like a very new belt as well take a look you can see how clean that belt is. No cracking or anything on the belt. Original coils. These are factory OEM coils numbered. Very nice. <laughs> somebody, somebody loved this car. Coolant, fresh and clean. Look at this. No signs of rust in the coolant at all. Let's check the oil. Wow, also very clean oil as well. No joke. <laughs> All right, we've got aftermarket plug wire. So at some point in the last 175,000 miles, somebody has changed the spark plug wires, probably spark plugs at the same time. It looks like valve cover gaskets were recently redone. We've got these blue grommets all around. Looks like a little bit of oil up here. That's probably from when the valve cover gaskets were leaking. This looks like a replacement thermostat housing. It's full of washer fluid. I'm telling you, somebody loved this car. You wanna talk about a car that's easy to work on? This is why I'm saying this is probably your best bang for your buck. If you're looking for an inexpensive vehicle, it's gonna get you around, be reliable, and be easy to repair, cheap to maintain. Something like this, it doesn't have to be a Pontiac Bonneville, it could be a Buick LeSabre, Buick Park Avenue, of course, Oldsmobile had, had their own derivatives of the same thing. They're basically all the same. Whether you get a Chevy, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, it doesn't matter. They're all the same platform underneath. It's this engine and this transmission that are the reason you should choose one of these vehicles. You can buy an engine for this thing for like four or 500 bucks. And you can have this thing changed out easily in a single day. Same thing with the transmission. That thing's not a big pain to change. You gotta drop the subframe down. You can pull it out the side, slap a new one back in. Super easy and cheap. Speaking of transmission, why don't we take a peek at the transmission fluid, see what it looks like. Well, it's definitely a little brown. Looks like it's due for a service. Other than that, though, it doesn't look bad. I'll bet the transmission is fine. How this thing ended up being donated, I have no idea. Overall, very clean car. The oil cap was not on all the way, so I'm glad I checked that. Inside the engine, take a look at this. Take a look inside the engine. I don't know how well you can see in there, but everything is so clean. Wow. I'm impressed. The only thing that has me even a little bit concerned is over here, we're leaking a brown substance and it seems to be coming from under the fog light, which is kind of bizarre. If I had to guess, I'd guess this may be some type of oil or residue coming from maybe the AC condenser. Maybe it's got a leaky O-ring over there on that side. I'm gonna get you guys under here. Let's see if we can figure out where this is coming from. That's leaking right there off the frame rail. But again, I have no idea what that is. Not a clue. So you know what we're gonna do? Well, we're just gonna pretend like we never saw it. Looks like a rodent may have come in here and chewed up one of these fuel injector wires. Yeah, for sure. For sure, a rodent got in here. It's still intact, but we'll need to address that at some point. Looky right here. Here's another one that got chewed up. Two of them got chewed up. So we will have to come in here and address that for sure. But overall, 
This thing looks pretty good, guys. Why don't we take it for a drive? Now, this car came with two sets of keys for the trunk and two sets of keys for the ignition, which is really nice. That's not something that happens all the time. The car smells great. It looks great. I love the thing. <laughs> I really do. And I have not driven this car. I've done nothing to this car since it got here. Seems to fire up just fine. Let's look at our gauges. Looking good. Still got that old school factory cassette deck. I would love to put a tape in here and see if we can get a tape to play. It'll probably eat it. Let's turn on the radio. I don't hear it. There it is. There we go. <laughs> How about that? Wow, it works. The factory radio still works. Um, cigarette light. Well, cigarette lighter. PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> I'll need to uh, address that at some point. What do we got in here? Do not try to open the airbag. That's, that's great advice. Avoid trying to open the airbag at all costs. Tons of napkins. Uh, valve covers. What do we got in here? Nothing. Now, normally, all of these blanks here would have stuff. There would be buttons all over. These Pontiacs were just notorious for having buttons all over. The steering wheels just absolutely everywhere. You got a uh, an ashtray, old school ashtray, right there as well. Like I said, this is a pretty basic car. There's really not much to this. You also have a power point up here. I'm not quite sure what the point of that is, but it's there for some reason. All right, let's try out the air conditioning. I heard the compressor kick on. Let's close this door. Uh-oh. That window doesn't work. That window works. That window does nothing. And that window does nothing. Power locks work. Let's try the power mirrors. That works as well. Very nice. Let's try that side. Yes. Power mirrors work. Now we don't need to put a tag on this because I'm kind of surprised. We got a license plate with the car. Yeah. Car came with tags and they're still good. They're ready to go. We do have air blowing out of the vents. And making sure it's all coming out of the vents. I guess it is. It's cold. We have cold air conditioning in this car. Are you serious right now? A working radio and cold air conditioning. Um, unfortunately, the regulator is dead on this window. Real quick, I want to check the back windows. We could have a bad master switch um, causing these back windows not to work. Yeah, bingo, it's a master switch. No big deal. A lot of times you can just clean the contacts and they'll come right back to life. So if this works, this one does not work ashtrays in the doors talk about luxury this window honestly i wouldn't be concerned about not important that window works that's an important window i honestly don't care about this window either but the driver's window that is an important window that's your drive-through window if it doesn't work you got a serious problem and it sure doesn't work uh seats are manual on this meaning yeah you gotta you gotta adjust them by hand no power push buttons and as far as cup holders go, well, I guess you got this right here in the door. That's uh, that's supposed to be a cup holder. Why don't we take this thing for a ride? A uh, little concern though, the gasoline is empty. So why don't I roll this around to the shop real quick? Let's put some fuel in it. So turns out I was wrong about the seats being manual. I had to figure this out, but down here, there's the switches right there in the front of the seat. How about that? First drive, we're gonna take it over to the shop. Windshield wipers work. Yes, they do. We have cruise control. Ooh, the brakes definitely work. Wow. All right. Let's get it over to the shop. Let's put some gasoline in this thing real quick. Signals seem to work. So far, it doesn't ride too bad. I'm excited about this one. Let's get some fuel in it and we can take her for a 10 mile ride and see how she does. 
We're sitting at an angle right now, so it's probably going to show more fuel than is accurate, but it shows to be about half a tank. Kind of hard to go wrong with that. Roxy came by and paid us a visit, and then I guess she went on her way. Time to go for a test ride. I'm going to reset the trip. Should be approximately 10 miles when all is said and done. Even though by today's standards, this isn't a really big car, it actually feels pretty big. I hear some squeaking brakes. Of course, the car hasn't been driven in a while, so no surprise there. The sound of a good old 3800. Oh, wow. Guys, it shifts just fine. It's, it's doing great. What is that? There's an annoying squeal coming from somewhere. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That is, that is quite annoying. <laughs> okay, well, here in just a second, we're going to get it up to speed. We're going to see how it does. Currently cruising 45 miles an hour, no problem. Steering feels good. And we should be hitting 55. Are you guys ready for this? Now let's do 65. Let's hit it. And down the road we go. Not a problem. Of course, we got to try the cruise control. We'll get it up to about 70. Come on. There we go. I mean, it's definitely not fast by any stretch of the imagination, but cruise control is set. Take a look. We've got just over a quarter tank of gas, 70 miles an hour. Tack looks good. Let's take a peek at our gauges. I've got the air conditioning on, so it feels great in here right now. Very comfortable car. I know what you're thinking. There's no way a 1995 Pontiac Vaudeville with almost 200,000 miles is comfortable. I'm telling you, this is a car that I'd have no issue hopping in and driving anywhere. I would drive this to Indiana no problem. Super smooth, quiet, an occasional squeaking noise coming from like that side. Not sure what that is yet, but it seems like the faster I go, the less I hear it. In fact, now that we're going 70, over 70, I don't hear it at all. The only thing I'd have to fix is the driver's window because obviously drive-through window, you gotta have that. We've got tunes. Do you hear this? Just the sound of cruising down the road, guys. Not too shabby for a $600 car. The only thing that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me is I'm looking at the temperature gauge and it's reading exceptionally low. I'm kind of wondering if maybe somebody hasn't removed the thermostat from this because the temp gauge is probably sitting around 150, maybe 180 degrees, and it is not going any higher than that. I've had plenty of these in my day. I've had plenty of these Bonnevilles. These are some of my favorite Pontiacs, man. I absolutely love these. And the temperature gauge is definitely supposed to go a whole lot further up than where it's at right now. The occasional squeak is still coming from the front left somewhere. That I'm gonna need to try to figure out. Other than that though, steers great, handles great, goes down the road smooth as butter. We are doing just fine. All right, we made it to our five miles. And as you can see, the temperature gauge is just sitting exceptionally low. Now, it seems like the longer I let it sit here, I've, I've had it sitting here for about five minutes or so, not moving. Turn the air conditioning off because I don't want the cooling fans on. And it looks like the temperature is starting to creep up. So I'm relatively certain that we have either a thermostat stuck open or somebody just removed the thermostat from the car. So that's something you will want to take care of. You want to have a thermostat in your car. These things are designed to run at a certain temperature. And when you take out the thermostat, obviously the car will never get up to operating temperature. So back on the road we go, the, the transmission shifts great. Again, it could use some basic maintenance, like I'd change the oil. I'd probably go ahead and do a tune-up on it. Why not? Throw some plugs and wires in it. Throw some fuel system cleaner, a fresh tank of gas, change the trans fluid and filter just for, you know, a safety precaution. Tires are in good shape and that's it. Maybe change the fuel filter. Sometimes I forget these older cars had fuel filters. Change the fuel filter down the road you go, man. You got a car that's probably ready to give you years and thousands of miles of relatively trouble-free service, and you got it for next to nothing. 
kind of hard to argue with those numbers. One thing I forgot to test out was the horn. Usually the horns on these don't work. This horn works great. I'm curious if the uh, radio controls work on the steering. So let's turn on the radio and let's see if we can crank the volume up. Maybe? No. <laughs> these almost never work. This is the power button. Nothing. Volume up? No. Radio? Change the channel? No. So the buttons don't work. That's fine. Not a big deal. Everything else in this car works pretty dang well, guys, aside from the things I mentioned earlier. $600, a great price for a car like this, but you got to remember there are auction fees involved here, so that takes us from $600 up to $1,200. Is it still a good deal? I think so. I think it today. Oh, check engine light just came on and I'm losing power. Whoa. I was just bragging on you too, girl. I was just, yeah, we are, we are losing speed quickly. We are really losing speed. Oh, what's going on with my tack? I'm trying to floor it here. Come on. There we go. Let's get back up to speed. What is going on? Oh, yeah, I'm, it's dying. It is dying. Oh, man, come on. Come on, come on. Look at that RPM, it's just fluctuating. I've got a big hill coming up in front of me, guys. I've got traffic coming up behind me. What is going on here? Literally bragging on how great this car is and then boom, immediately after saying how great it is and what a great deal it was, check engine light comes on and the car starts bucking it's like surging and bucking this is the big hill i've got a car coming up behind me come on come on come on come on come on you got this you got this we are all yep and then it lost it we're out of power again and every time the tack just drops down i am steady on the throttle and the tack won't come up above 2000 we're just losing i'll let off smash it there we go come on it seems to get, no, nope, and then there it goes again. Drops down to 2,000 RPM and it's done. We are so close to getting back to town, guys. We got like two miles left. Come on. Oh boy. Yeah, we're gonna have to run the codes on this. I don't know what just happened there, but uh, come on. I'm flooring it and it just doesn't wanna go. It does not want to go at all. It's a 95, which means it's one of those weird OBD connectors. It's probably OBD2, but it still uses like this weird OBD1 technology. Thankfully, I've got some old school scanners that I hope will be able to read this. Uh-oh. Come on. Great. It's like I've just lost my gas pedal. I, I have no idea what's going on here, guys. We're close. I think we're gonna make it back to the house. And from there, I don't know. All right, we made it home, but I want you to look at the tack. I'm gonna floor it. You see how it kind of takes off, but sometimes, you hear that? It's bogging. If I turn the air conditioner on, oh, it's bogging down real bad. Let's turn the AC off. I'm going to pop the hood. And let's just take a peek under there and see. Oh, it's, oh, it smells. Ooh. It smells awful. What have we got going on under here? What is your problem? Do we have wires touching maybe for uh, fuel injectors? I don't think so. Good pressure on the cooling system. 
but that hose is too cold. I can put my hand on it and it's fine. I guarantee you, there ain't no thermostat in there, guys. I mean, this engine runs so quiet. So good. A little bit of a uh, smoke coming from back here, like maybe a slightly leaking valve cover gasket. Well, I'm kind of at a loss right now, guys. Well, that's new. That's, uh, that was unexpected. Look at this radiator cap. It's so cold, I can literally rest the back of my hand on it. That's not normal. So she definitely needs to be brought up to operating temperature. A little concerned that we might have something going on with the mass airflow sensor. Mass airflow sensors on these things will wreak havoc if they're not working properly. So we could have an idle air control issue, throttle position sensor, could be a mass airflow sensor. Overall, I don't think it's gonna be anything crazy or major. The main reason for that is because the car ran and drove perfectly fine. It did absolutely great until the check engine light came on. As soon as the car completed all of its initial checks, boom, it found something wrong, check engine light came on, and immediately after that, the car lost power and started driving poorly. Now, let's see if we can find the OBD port. It should be somewhere under here. Oh, I can't, right there. It kinda looks like OBD2. I guarantee it's not. I promise you that's not an OBD2 port. It looks like it. But I assure you it's not. I could hook up my scanner real quick. I don't think it's gonna work, but let's do it anyway. We'll let the car run for a little while so we can keep an eye on that temperature gauge. Well, I've been busy for a few minutes. I brought out my scan tool knowing full well it wasn't going to work on this car. 95 for GM is a very odd year. It's a weird hybrid system. You basically have an OBD2 connector, which this plugs into perfectly, but it's still running on like some kind of an OBD1 protocol. So the OBD2 scanners don't work. You've got to have a specific scan tool that works on this. And unfortunately, I don't have one. The scanners that I have in the garage that are old school, they only go up to 1989 on GM vehicles. Obviously this is 95 and that's not going to work. Plus you would need the OBD2 adapter to fit this and then convert it back to OBD1. So I guess you need probably something like a Tech2 scan tool. I don't know. It's not changed. See when I try to... That's floored. And it just... It's not happy. Take a look at the temperature gauge. It finally warmed up to normal operating temperature and the oil pressure has gone to a normal range for a, a warmed up engine. So all of that is working properly. Like I said, I know for a fact it needs a thermostat. I know it needs a window regulator, probably whole motor regulator assembly on that side. These are no big deal. My biggest problem is the check engine light. That is going to be my biggest problem. I'm gonna to have to look around on Amazon and eBay. Surely somebody sells something to work with this. If you know what it is, drop a comment below and tell me you could really help me out. If you've got a link, even better. And as you can see, the oil pressure goes up and down. It fluctuates just like it should when you hit the throttle. Unfortunately, revving this is kind of difficult. I'm gonna shut it off, try to start it back up. I mean, it fires right up. And then it hangs. Oh, check engine light just went out. It just, but it still hangs. It's still, I swear I hear a rattling catalytic converter. I wonder if we have a clogged cat. Hear that? And then the smell. That smell. Either we've got some rotten gas moving its way through the system, partially clogged fuel filter, or we've got a catalytic converter that's given us some problems. Either way, I don't think whatever's going on with this car is a very big deal. It probably wouldn't hurt to fill it up with fresh fuel. Like I said, maybe change the fuel filter. I think I'm gonna conclude this video here. I would love to be able to run 
a diagnostic on this and find out what that check engine light came on for and I have no doubt that it will absolutely come back on again but overall I still feel like what I paid for this car was a fair deal maybe not a great deal but a fair deal 1200 bucks out the door until just a few minutes ago it was cruising down the highway at speed 70 miles an hour no problem at all I'd like to know if the headlights work that's something we haven't checked yet it also has the sentinel lights too I've always liked those. I can already see the interior lights are on on the dash. That kind of orange glow. I love that. Let's take a look. Let's turn on the brights while we're at it. Bright lights came on there. Yeah, I can already see them shining on the house here. So side markers, headlights. And let's check the tail lights. Yeah. Everything back here seems to work. We'll put on the dims. And uh, I know the signals work because I can hear them. Let's double check. Should have a signal light right there. And signal light up here. Corner light works. Signal light works. Dims are on. And the other side. Yeah. Not a bad car. She just needs a little bit of love, guys. And I think I'll start with maybe trying to put some fresh fuel in her. Maybe that'll make a difference. I have no doubt that this car has sat for a while. I don't think it sat for years and years or anything, but I do think that somebody probably parked it and eventually got rid of it because they could not properly diagnose this issue. How far am I willing to go with this car? I don't know. Obviously with $1,200 in it already, I stand to lose money in it as it is because these cars just aren't worth anything. Now, if you're ever in a pinch and you're trying to figure out what's going on with your car and whether it's something actually mechanically wrong or something electrical like a sensor, I hate to do this because it is kind of a half-assed way of doing things. But if you unplug the mass airflow sensor, well, generally speaking, you should have heard it change. Well, it died. So that's something. Let's leave it unplugged. Normally when you unplug a mass airflow sensor, you should have heard something change with the engine. I didn't hear anything change at all. Obviously, check engine light is immediately on. Ah! Would you look at that? Okay, it did die. It's not happy about the mass airflow sensor. But you notice it, it starts up quick. Seems to idle fine. No more hanging. And then it died. <laughs> Come on now. Huh. Well, so that gives us a starting point. I think it's safe to assume that whatever's wrong with the car has something to do with the sensor and not a clogged up catalytic converter as I was initially thinking. So again, this is something that we're really going to need to get a scan tool for. We're probably going to have to drive the car. We're going to need a specialized scan tool for this one. But once I get it, we can drive the car till the check engine light comes on and then hopefully We'll be able to figure it out, fix it, and it'll be good to go. This is not a car that I plan on keeping, guys. I know everybody's going to be like, you got to keep that car forever and ever. No, guys, it's just been a long time since we bought something kind of old to the channel. We've been so busy buying a lot of this newer stuff, a lot of ridiculous stuff on the channel. And honestly, this was the foundation of the channel. It was old, cheap kind of buckets you know what i mean things that could get you from a to b that's what i founded this channel on and although i'm enjoying doing things like the cadillac elr uh, the porsche hasn't come out yet the bentley obviously we've only done one video on the bentley because i've driven the car forever and it just refuses to break uh, the weird little right hand drive nissan from japan of course the 84 chevy c20 i've got plenty of other vehicles guys we've got the 87 monte carlo ss in the garage i've got the tesla back at the house we've just been so busy with all of this newer stuff that i've kind of neglected those of you 
that are here for some of the old stuff. And that's why I brought this home. Something old for us to try to figure out, put back on the road. And then ultimately its fate is probably going to be going right back to Copart where it can be sold for probably next to nothing. But at least somebody will get themselves a good little car for cheap. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here, but do me a favor. If you enjoy old cheap buckets on the channel, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment below and tell me that that's what you wanna see. You wanna see more of that on the channel and I'll be happy to oblige. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.